Good day everyone and welcome back to my channel. This time we will be discussing sampling technique. What is sampling? Sampling is a process of selection. Let's say for example ito yung population. Then the researcher ay kukuha lang ng portion of the population na magiging part sa sample. Yung process of getting sample from the population is what we call sampling. Mga advantages ng sampling. Since sampling will only consider a portion of the population, therefore a smaller set of data, it can save. And you know, it's easy to work with smaller data compared to a large mass of data. And sampling can really save time. And sampling has greater accuracy. Ano naman ang target population? Ito yung entire group a researcher is interested in. The researcher decided to have only a sample from the target population that is known as sample population. Collection of elements from which the sample is. Sampling frame, list of sample units. There are two types of sampling. We have probability sampling or random sampling. It is a process in which different units in the population have equal probabilities of being chosen. A random selection, it is performed by selecting a group of subjects in sample for study from a larger group, which is the population. And by using random selection, the likelihood of bias is reduced. Another type of sampling is non-probability sampling or non-random sampling. It does not in involve random selection of samples. Types of probability sampling or random sampling. We have simple random sampling. It is the basic sampling technique where a group of subjects to your sample is selected for study from a larger group of population. The most common techniques are by using strips of paper with the use of a printed table of random numbers or the use of random numbers generated by many computer programs or scientific calculators. Another type is stratified random sampling. This sampling method involves dividing the population into homogeneous subgroups and then taking a simple random sample in each subgroup. And the third, systematic random sampling. This method of selecting a sample by taking every eight unit from the population, the first unit is selected at random. Here, K is called the sampling interval and the reciprocal 1 over K is the sampling fraction. For example, the total population is 100. Ang gusto ng researcher ay 10 out of 100. The researcher will divide 100 by 10. So 100 divided by 10 is 10. Therefore, 10 is the K unit, the 10th element or 10 unit. So the researcher will count 1 to 10, 1 to 10, 1 to 10. Let's say, for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The first 10 is the first respondent. Then the researcher will count another 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The second 10th element is the second respondent. Then just continue the process until you will get a total of 10 respondents. The process is known as systematic random sampling. Cluster random sampling. This sampling method involves dividing the population into a cluster, usually along geographic boundaries, and randomly taking samples of clusters, measuring all units within sample boundaries. Let's have non-probability sampling or non-random sampling. No accidental, haphazard, or convenient sampling are just the same. This is one of the most common methods of sampling, which is primarily based on the convenience of the researcher. Most examples are interviews conducted frequently by television news programs to get a quick, although non-representative, reading of the public opinion. Another is purposive sampling. Samples are taken with a purpose in mind already. Usually, one or more specific predefined groups are sought. All of the methods below can be considered subcategories of purposive sampling methods. Model instance sampling, expert sampling, 
Cota sampling, heterogeneity sampling, and snowball sampling. After deciding on what sampling technique to use in getting respondents, the researcher needs to identify the minimum number of sample respondents. And in determining the minimum number of sample respondents, we need to have a sample size and we'll be using sample size formula. Oh, when it is not possible to study the entire population, example, the total population of the Philippines, a smaller sample is taken using random sampling technique. Of course, we'll decide uh, random sampling or non-random. Slovin's formula allows a researcher to sample the population with a desired degree of accuracy. Slovin's formula gives the researcher an idea of how large the sample size needs to be to ensure a reasonable accuracy of results. This formula is appropriate in the event of concrete ignorance about the behavior of the population. The formula is the small letter N, which is the sample size, capital letter N, which is the population, all over one plus the letter N, the population, E squared. So that is E squared. E is the error tolerance or the margin of error raised to the power of two. Let's have an example. The population is 9,000 and the margin of error is 2%. So we will just substitute this in the formula. The small letter n, which is the desired sample size, the 9,000 substitute, substitute that here, the population, then one is constant as the 9,000 population. Since the margin of error is 2%, convert this into decimal, it will become 0 0.02 raised to the power of 2. Then we have 0 0.02 raised to the power of 2 is 0 0.004, 0 0.004. Then times 9,000 plus 1 is now 1 plus 3.0, 3.6. So 9,000 divided by 1 plus 3.6, it is equal to 1,957. So out of 9,000 with a margin of error of 2%, the minimum sample size using Slovens formula is 1,957. We have another population, another formula. If the population size or a very large population size is scores for the most common confidence interval, so from 90% to a z-score is equal to 1.645 value, 95% a Z score is 1.96 and 99% as Z score is 2.326. We have the sample size. This one using Excel, we just substitute. Then we have the sample size is 1,270. In this case, the Z that the Z that I used here is 1.96, 95% confidence interval. Uh, using the sample size formula using Excel, let's input n is 3000. Of course, one is constant. The margin of error is 5%. E square. Then the result is 300. Using Excel, uh, of course, this one is the Slovens formula. So if you use Excel, automatically we'll get the result. Just input the values. So we have here just the repetition, emphasizing that it would be faster and easier if you will use Excel with just input the values. Let's have an exam, another example of the use of Slovin's formula. Determine the sample size that the researcher wants to include in the study if the population size of at 95% accuracy. Since 95% accuracy is to be evaluated, thus the corresponding error is 5% or 0 0.05. Applying the sample size formula, the just substitute 475 the population, population, then the margin of error is 5%. You square this one, then multiply, then plus one, then 475 divided by the answer of this, 217.14. From 217.14, it will become 208 and rounded off to the 
next whole number. So, irregardless kung ano yung value dito sa decimal point, round off na to the next whole number. Considered na siya as plus 1. Sample size calculator, if you want to explore other sample size formula, and if you want to use the internet, just this, this link. Of course, you'll be required to input the population and the margin of error. Just a click of your finger, it will automatically compute the this. My limitations sa paggamit ng Slovens formula. The Slovens formula calculates the number of samples required when the population is too large to directly sample every member. Slovens formula works for simple random sampling. If the population to be sampled has obvious subgroups, Slovens formula could be applied to each group instead of the whole group. Consider the example problem. If all 1,000 employees work sa offices, the survey results would most likely reflect the needs of the entire group. If instead, 700 of the employees work in the office while other 300 do maintenance work, their needs will differ. In this case, a single survey might not provide the data required, whereas sampling each group would provide more accurate results. Another formula is Hopran sample size formula. It is used for a large heterogeneous population the confidence level corresponds to a z-score. This is a constant value needed for this equation. Here are the scores for the most common confidence levels values. So if you choose a different confidence level, various online tools can help you find your score. You may just sort the uh, internet. So necessary sample size using this formula. So here is an example of how the math works. Assuming you two you told a 90% confidence level, 0.6 standard deviation, and a margin of error of the confidence interval of plus minus 4%. You can substitute that in the formula. This one is the Z score, 1.64. This one plus you have the 0.6 standard deviation. Then this will become. 0.4 because of this one minus the standard deviation, 0.4 over the margin of error of plus minus 4%, so 0 0.04. For you square this one, it's 0 0.0016. Then 0.4 times 0 0.6 is 0 0.24. 1.64 square is 2.6896. Then you multiply this two. Then the product of this divide by this the answer is 403.44 which is congruent to 404. Therefore, at least 400 correspondents are needed for a population of, yeah, that would... no, there's no given population, the 90% confidence level with a standard deviation and given and the margin of error. That is known as Cochrane's sample size formula. That's it. So we're done discussing sampling technique and how to determine the minimum sample size using different sample size formulas. We have Slovin's formula and we have Cochrane's formula. And may mga available nga sample size calculator in the internet. Just go, go to Google search engine then just type sample size calculator. Then you'll be guided on how to determine the minimum sample size for that. That's all for sampling technique and sample size. Ited kayo palagi sa lecture series natin.